Hello, everybody. I'm Daniel Walzer. I'm, I'm the host for tonight's lecture. It will be all in English that our guest, Annalina Starkova, is uh, able to follow everything. We met um, more than a year ago, uh, all through the old Jati work. Where I did uh, some public, when I published uh, this, his last work in, in in Basel, and you were working on the book A Non-Referential Architecture, uh, the translation, the, the Russian uh, in Russian on that book, and we were since then in conversation about different topics in architecture. Probably even we developed uh, a project out of this. And that's why I think it's interesting to talk with you tonight and to, to see a bit what you do. You really, you're teaching a lot, you have research, you are projecting, you are dealing with clients. You lived in Paris, in Brussels, in Moscow. Now you're back in Ukraine, so you're quite, quite independent in your way of living and your way of working. And this appreciate very much. And that's why I think you even fit into the into the conversation we have tonight or this conversation series about the potential of architecture or where we can where we would research on where we research on the, the on, on the possibilities what you can create and and do with architecture and what's the result so i'm really happy to welcome you annalina Stakova. and um, please um we are very curious what you do or what you want to tell us Thank you. thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you for the over. Oh, sorry. Uh, it looks nice. I, love it. Um, I have to for start. Uh, I will share my PDF. I will switch all the videos. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and we will share our project. Do you see the screen? Yeah. Yes, we see a screen. Well, uh, today under the firmament of the topic of our lecture, as Daniel said, the potential of architecture, I'm going to enter with some sort of investigative questions and like direction, directed lines of thinking that could send to us as architects for people who learn architecture, a very light, like a silhouette or delineation. You are not, you're very silent. Can you ah, really? raise your voice? And when we were talking before, it was better? Uh, just one student remarked that uh, this, uh, that you're quite, um, that they don't you hear you very well. You also didn't hear me? And you didn't hear me also? Uh, no, for me it was okay. Just um, I heard some comments. That's why I'm asking. Okay. Well, if I will talk like that, if it will be better, no, because as I said before, there is some complexity with it. No. Okay, I will continue. You yeah, will continue. Tell me if there will be problem later. I will try. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in the lightest of this uh, of this topic, um, we will try to to come in the in the contemporary realm of architecture. I will say a word about my personal life position with some of my projects contemporary. And again, it is important to emphasize from a very start of the lecture that I'm not going to fix or like build. Some, some sort of aesthetical system or an architectural perspective. I'm just going towards the idea of the contemporary architecture and its potential. Well, I would like to start with this word that you see on the screen. It is very poetic, introductory word. For me, you know, the poetry itself is inspiring and interesting as a condensed verbal form of senses and feelings, the situation that are usually uh, wraps the very extended time frames out of us, no reference. In that exact sense, I see a lot of common with this formulation or composition of words as we see in poetry. I see a lot of comments of it with architecture, actually. 
Here it is a very old poem from the times of ancient Egypt, and if you can uh, really the voice of the Taoist speaking, it is saying, the land has been made bright, what is your path? This is actually a very uh, like eternal quest, not only in field of design or work with any resources, but it is the very metaphysical mess that constitute and define our reality and how we build, how we build actually our reality as a human. In the context of our conversation, of our lecture, I would also propose to for start to ask yourself, you as a young student or you as an architect, what is actually your path? When really obviously you would have bright natural foundation in the face like nature, our planet does everything to make it bright, everything to make our future bright for almost everyone is very possible. And it is not an idealistic uh, word, but a very rational intellect. In order to continue with this, my words, uh, imaginary of this intellectual quest that every architect experience, you know, when, when trying or she trying to find his path, uh, not important actually whether you're young or not. Um, you always learn something and you're looking for, for the new. I would be curious for start, what is actually the artificial paisage or the reality we live in today? With this image that you can see on the screen, it is a starship CN20. By many means, undoubtedly is connected to the cultural atmosphere of our century and the young people will understand it especially. We see on this image the big man designed and built ship or like beautiful form, impressive form, or even the house and the moon on the background, the moon, not Earth. The moon that is an Earth satellite, a dwarf planet that is out of any human dimensions and environment. What is interesting, if we will look at this image for a long time, we will figure out that we are unable to fully understand, to fully comprehend this composition, this scale. And um, uh, of course, um, uh, what I mean by saying that and what I actually want uh, uh, to, uh, to, to share with you, the idea of the physical, I mean, really physical disclosure of the high space came in our lives in the last century as a tool of the, of course, a scientific interest. And next to that, not less importantly, as a, like a political run or a political claim. And fastly, very fastly became an ideological scenario or a myth of the greatest material approach to pray to the high cosmos, to like unknown realms, and finally to the spiritual. It is today the late motive of our time. I myself, through the history of my own family, very much like connect to this industry that is under the myth of physical comprehension of the high space that I feel myself. I'm not uh, enchanted by that. For my understanding, it is an extra interest for the value of human life should be and the game shouldn't be underestimated as we see today by making a parallel between the virtual industry, like let's say space industry, and the real human fact. By that, uh, if we will take a look at the level of exquisitely made design, it, it is really captured and enchanting by tangibility on the screen, the tiles. Um, we are like, we want to understand and, and we are like, uh, I'm just young architect, like you cannot be not impressed by the quality of this, let's say, work, if it could be a facet of it. And, um, and it makes me feel a desire or even a dream to participate in this, let's say, audio, to be a part of it and to be a virtual dreamer, like, let's say, uh, about actually this realm. In, in this exa example, it is the idea of SpaceX and Starship and their life. 
Nevertheless, this sort of enchantment, it has another side, really a very radical another side. I would call it the earth side, the earth side, which is whether we want to believe it or not, is our real life, our dimension, our body. On this strange photo that I received from one famous and very talented Swiss filmmaker who made uh, a movie about Russian company Das Kosmos. On this image, you see two a very real men. Uh, uh, it is in uh, in Kazakhstan. They are living in Kazakhstan. Uh, you see the landscape of Kazakhstan on the background of this photo. And he sees a wreckage, a part of the Soros rocket uh, on, on this image. What they did, they, they made a cabin, a house, a space to sleep out of it, out, out of it, I mean, being that they made an architecture that is comprehensible for them. In other words, in the context of previous slides, they built a reality out of ashes of virtual. They built architecture in the material of what is remained, the virtual ideology. This example could be curious or even funny, if not the chance for us to make uh, like a metaphorical representation. This, this is the exaggerated portrait of the, our life, or the people's life and of the consequence life of architecture under the rule of virtual ideology or again, any possible ideology exists today. This double-sided um, stone, this this double-sided world of our common living with the different myths that people create was always of interest to me, a fundamental gap that in all my works as a practicing architect, I want to balance and articulate in the different forms and presentations I would bring to the agenda of the contemporary architecture also. With this in mind, there was an initiative that took place about three years ago. That was the time, if we remember, of the very big interest in the idea of climate, cultural and cultural change an idea of global south and apply technological economic factors to all that. Thus, this investigative project was called the Crow South. You see the title of this of the publication. The name that would be able to organize all the current tendencies and interests under itself in order to be understandable that I gave to this project, this Crow South. It is a cover of a state uh, that I also published some, some, some years ago about this project. It's not a speculative or theoretical investigation, but a very formal attempt to build up some, some sort of Italian uh, architecture for this exact situation that I will describe right now. Uh, there was a long time consuming research actually that was connected to the location of South Pole a uh, territory that is uh, virtual and as virtual and as real as possible at the same time. I'm not going to overlap now with all the information about it, but we'll try to make everything as iconic as possible. You will see on the screen that uh, there was some points or indicators that we made actually very deep research. Uh, there's some the main points of our general position, we just try to understand the potential and the needs of the place of the South Pole of the Antarctica. There is the continent of Antarctica that is a powerful actual place that is very active today and it plays a big role in our natural climate and also political climate. I have worked with people who actually live and work and have their contracts with uh, some like research stations in Antarctica and they, they are scientists. Uh, they even live there with their families. Uh, there are around 80 scientific stations that are at the same time symbolic uh, like political claim of different countries from Great Britain to Russian Federation. But the idea and the possibilities of many, many of such uh, places, of such stations where they make some research, 
are hardly limited to different regions, but at the same time, the general atmosphere of the place of the of the Antarctica is becoming more and more unconsciously polluted. I mean, by mean not only ecologically but culturally. There's a lot of also problems uh, of the natural infection, which uh, actually this sort of solution could have a very long-lasting effect, not only our life of people, for local people who live there, but also uh, on, um, it could have actually big consequence, important consequence for the health of all our, all, all our planet. It is not an empty word, it is real, it's the real truth. It is real. Um, so we can say that there are virtual places in our universe uh, where humans have a limited access. There is reason to see that we, uh, us with our team, uh, actually made some point that really uh, the tourism or some research uh, or this uh, all, uh, all shifts in Antarctic Treaty System political program uh, in all the trends could be could be could be somehow changed or shifted by our program. So we afterwards built uh, we built like um, like a fan program, but my work as an architect was actually architectural proposal. Um, to this contemporary situation of this continent, of this program, uh, that would actually satisfy all the possible needs of the place, the sun, the tourism, as I saw before, but in a very condensed form of expression, in a very condensed architectural form. Of, uh, we're talking a lot about what is the actually access, how accessible this continent is. Um, and we actually did that, let's say, plan of this station with the idea in mind that there could be a fast limitation of the current uh, quantity of active stations. Again, there is about 80 stations today. And you could move the on-Earth research to the responsibility of artificial rugged system. But the human placing could be represented by such a station that we see from some here, uh, actually talks quite a long topic that we made, and I, I really somehow love this, this project. Um, it is a very like plan, it's very non differential area, a special organization that could be built in real material or not built or repeated as an etalon in some so many forms like contemporary architecture. Afterwards, actually, this project, uh, there is also materials, I just again just want to do with everything. This project was presented at the exhibition for the uh, Association of German Architects in Berlin. Um, of course, all this thinking and all this experience was later on presented to some publication that also I made. And one of them, as you see on the screen now, is an essay called an uh, account is uh, intermission. It is a very metaphorical term that is connected to culture of cinema, as you know, actually. Um, in other words, it is sort of stop time or a pause that person could take to analyze some events or analyze something he saw or felt. It was uh, in, I could say, a pre-COVID time when, you know, everything was very, very fast. And I was thinking after that Kurzweil project that I had actually brought us as research very long for this uh, program, I figured out that we need some sort of that intermission in our contemporary agenda. Um, I felt that we need to stop and just to understand. 
uh, and the game in this world that is set. The content of this world, uh, I'm as always, I'm trying to connect, make connection between the real and the virtual, and to understand who we or what we could, where we could live today, and how we build our reality today. Where the very dynamic, uh, not the virtual. And one of the, there was also, it's all uh, published on my website as well, which is it's still interest, uh, but there was a very naive maybe, but uh, a very nice uh, magical drawing that I love very much. It's by a French artist uh, that uh, he was an illustrator and um, he sees like uh, he made like a cosmic image of Earth, but his, his imagination that like I would, I would describe it like a possible world that has imagination exists here and um, this is sort of uh, assumption that the real tale could exist in architecture in man-made architectural cells it is material formal presentation it could become a true if we will be free enough brave enough see and construct it this uh, our retails of everyday lives will be not of the continuation of some anonymous virtual ideologies like I, I showed our previous but the sufficient and independent quality that makes our lives out of our image, out of our uh, like dreams. Um, in this, as, as I say in this publication, it's all about the intermission publication, I pointed out some vision around the need of new tangibility and the aesthetic for a uh, design, uh, designed world that could work as um, some sort of balancing vessel for any ideological discourse that exists in social in our, in our society. I mean, uh, I mean, as for real architectural in near world that we represent tangibility. Um, in this uh, context, uh, where we could actually go in search for this new, not virtual sensation, and how it could build in actually, actually, such a wide context of uh, assumptions that I was talking about. Uh, gives us a really wide circle for learning and inspiration for architects. Uh, for formal that is going beyond time, actually, and beyond the present experience that we have today of time. Uh, Reference that seen and felt. On this image, we see the entrance to the pyramid, the Great Pyramid, that is obviously not contemporary architecture, not architecture of our century. It is actually ancient building, upside ancient building. It's a raw composition of stone that is truly fundamental in how it was ideated and directed. And as we see, there is three men on the photo. And their, their poses give us the impression of the intimacy, sort of like connection and, and, and the perfect confluence of their bodies and the composition of the stone. Um, I exactly in this way, I, I, I can only suppose and I think that by my very architectural intuition that in, exactly in this way, Contemporary architecture could play uh, a big role in enforcement, this actual connection between people and the material, be people and archi architecture, by making building ideated or even in terms of virtual, ideally real, as real as possible. For example, this what we see, something like very fundamental. Uh, the same as we see actually in my. Another, um, 
another another pen uh, that I would also show in this context. Virtual and real. Now their project is not my project at the moment, but it's also old old project is the old temple in of magic. Uh, this plan, which I love very much, it demonstrates a very elaborated and deep layering of room and slow projection. See, we see very close the layering of thinking of ideas of artists. What is interesting is that it is less important whether we understand the program of it, who is the real program of the space or functional contents of it. But the most important is uh, architectonic proposition this architect made here. It is sort of, again, like a material ma made where you want and can think endlessly construct your life also endlessly. I haven't seen such an example of architecture today. No. I think it's just something uh, out of our, our time. It, it looks like a combination talking about. And this is, it looks very contemporary. Um, same reason I also find the Simon building of Palazzo Pitti in Italy, also a good example. Filling the step that I was talking about the gap between real and virtual. Uh, how you do that? I think that actually the architect that I see that do that by the full architectonic tangible formula. It is obvious only just when you look past that you do it. Uh, just um, again less important who actually does it. It's he or not whether we can call it a project uh, and what the function it serves because a lot of different but the most important is impressiveness of form that gives us a lot for the fundamental the foundation for our life we see the three levels of a very poor very precise very confident chorus that is evident even just by fast look at the assets are like sort of anchoring us, give us a feel of presence, of the presence in time and place. On contrary, the feel, actually the feel that we lost in contemporary architecture at all, in my opinion. Um, the next slide is a well-known book today. It is treaties that sold the world in a very right time in the context of creation of Hulk. Uh, this uh, book I think could extend and appear my conjecture about architecture function. It's called non-referential architecture book by Swiss architect Valerio Olgiati and Marco Schmidt was published around three years ago. And still it is very important, like a uh, theoretical uh, work of the last years. I myself put actually a lot of effort for proliferation, popularization of this book of this idea over Eastern Europe, over Russia and for Ukraine. Uh, and we are successfully waiting for the publication of the of the Russian edition of the non-referential architecture already in maybe one week in Moscow. People if someone was waiting for publication coming very um what about the content of the book uh, that is very good fit to the topic of the lecture? Uh, here is the architect Valerio 
it's of a few like principle principle that could be of a big help for every young or for every architect uh, architect um every person who think and build the future so every architect who and the present principles could be understood as the solar rules, like one by one, or a set of guidance for, for the successful operation in the world of architecture. It's sort of what instruction or, um, or method. The first to have an experience of space as this content that architect creates, and that is common to all of us as people. In architecture, it should be understood as material. That experience of a space that you create uh, for people, this is also sort of material that you have to work with. This is on the first stage. The second principle is an oneness. It is about the wholeness of the architectural project, a sort of sort of ecological system. I place it very fashionable. Uh, this is the proof that uh, wholeness. This is the proof that your architectural idea that was described under the next principle in the content uh, will actually work. And so the idea of the architect who creates, uh, who will create building, the idea is the cornerstone of very every building should be demonstrated it in, in its construction, its architectonic presence. And only if all the sort of rules will, we will be a real architect. Not real, but architecture. Not be just structure will be a architect. So you can actually what I love about this book is that of course it gives you some guidance, but it also gives you a lot of space for experimentation for your own um, Let's say you can add or you can, everyone understand the principles in, in, in a way. And this is um, actually the, the one of the most content of, of this book. I very much. What uh, I would love to continue about, about this book in the context of my lecture, I think it's important also to have some access to some illustrations that do of some of this. I understood very well. So I came. architectonic order as we find it here to so the order of principle would be actually the most important tool for the building uh, architectural experience architecture on this scheme that I show you very long we see four some some four elements that are original follow possibly follow the same it's a very abstract station of some four elements follow the same size same color and possibly all the same material but just by instrumental adjustment by the adjustment of architects, all of them could be actually understood by people and felt by people in a very different way. 
this is actually for me um this is actually the power i think of architecture language on this this is also an example of body elements but you independently of the surface able to change the space understanding so actually you make four language just out of all the things we can imagine that this uh, this element that i showed before is some let's say um or maybe it's constellation columns and this is the image about my all of it uh where we see this architectonic complexity of columns that already give space by just but then we need no adjustment architecture elements already give place is sort of very dramatic i would say effect and some sort of sensibility in a very situational manner Place of people. There is a The same, uh, this was like uh, in terms of how the columns were. I, I emphasize on this very, very delicate, uh, delicate formula. Uh, the same could be contemplated here. Also, just an example. Underground, it's an underground territory. So, where the material and forces could be also the same in previous example and this example. But just by the difference in architectonic formula in, let's say, in the elements of columns, we get some absolutely simplified form, absolutely another, another uh, spirit of space, another action. But if we will, if we will make uh, a parallel between the spaces, they are very much built under this composition. Boring, there and there is column. And by me, very clever concrete. This, I think, also what what actually about architecture was makes architecture very real, very tangible. I think it's one of points that the architect today should work. I cannot say that I see everything. Uh, another uh, example, just I would love. some of my thoughts. This is the plan of small house. This house in plan. Actually, or not. This is a plan of small house. Built in ring already. Um, this house is also, I think, could be nice demonstration of how the idea of architectonic and space of the private life could be just could be just like how very clearly demonstrated by the plan. What I'm talking about. A very rational representation of the idea of the house. This is the house that you see that the core of this house is the water space, like the bathroom. The and we have the corridor that is a sort of connector. Uh, what I mean, the connector, I mean, it's um, a convenient connection. 
uh, and at the same time a very intimate distance between the private, the public and the public. In that way, you don't even possibly need doors or this is also like a very metaphorical idea, form of expression because uh, it's about family and how uh, how they live together without it. And with this, uh, uh, like sort of architectonic, uh, architectonic idea that has done, um, I make this formulation even more confident when we like we can like, like make the foundation of the ground floor on the ground floor. It's like a foundation that I'm the ground floor by the composition of columns of that are at the same time uh, a flexible could work as a flexible partition is of some like structure free and again we see the same like column same elements that feed it again and circuit but in the gate it gives us a bit different just by this architectural how actually I I I I, I draw it in 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 um next uh, project that also I think in this context could be very much Uh, is very open. It is a plan uh, of Institute of Innovation building for studying, of for study, for communicate. And at first sight, it seems um, that. Uh, it is a very, a very oversimplified plan, building plan, very simple, very regular. But if we will take some time, we will walk through it. Possible to see in your screen. Um, we will be actually see that that reduction of the formality is sort of requirement. It is sort of necessity for the style of thinking, scientific style of thinking. We further will understand that the idea of science is a very defined activity that always also require a very truly. Uh, this style of thinking, I think that that was actually the idea, could be as an instrument for the training and selection of form of because it's like we're trying to think be the scientific. Um, the architectonic idea here is not about work with material or not tangibility or not, but the rationality of how the dynamic thinking works and the style of it. And I find it quite interesting. But that, of course, for me, it was a very important, simple way of how it should be, how it can be built. It should be very The same, of course, we uh, the interior. Uh, this just just about of the building. Also, the 
that is that is confident song. We are going to oh, see against Felix. All in one. It has not option. Another orientation. Front ability to after the corner. Ability. So. I think actually that maybe it's um, maybe I probably heard me. Well, I think that uh, this is the first part of my lecture. Maybe you have some sort of something to discuss. Uh, Daniela, are you here? Because I thank you very much for yeah. your input. Shall I, shall I say something or shall I, do, do you want to, 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 to have reactions from the students? Uh, maybe uh, if there will be some reaction, we could just uh, talk about something, about the book maybe or projects. Uh, I, I just showed a few, but uh, already, if we have any questions. Are there any questions? So what's in if there is no um what's interesting in your work is that you are interested from ancient Egypt to Italy to Japan. You don't divide these cultures into whatever you 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 take from each culture what you think is suitable how do you choose or what's 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 your what's your access to these different cultures and times because you um, you're quite large in your 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 references you have or what's what's what attracts you in these references yes you're right uh, actually what attracts me as i said i i, I travel a lot actually and through your personal experience when you see the building you understand that this is really it really works um i just inspired by when i feel feel that this is really uh really something that could be and i'm like uh, you know indicator for that um there is no i don't have it like and i think that it is not the right way when you are trying to built like sort of system you know thinking that you should do that now but um, of course uh, some projects came through some architectural uh, referential research but mostly my personal that is the same. that's but one thing you can go go back to the Hilarious also the archaeology, like what you see as the form, form, and you feel it, you remember it, you can touch it, and you understand it more. But when I understand you right, it's not uh, you or you, you. Of course, you feel close to the things Valerio said, or is was writing down together with Marcos Breitschmidt, but. Yeah, it's not that you 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 read the book and you ended there. It's more that you had your research anyway, and you felt somehow close when you read the book that there is oh there is some truth where you connected. Yes, I actually was thinking when I made in three years ago some projects. I was thinking about all the ideas that Valerio wrote and Marcus wrote in the book. Well, that actually, when you work out and you develop to the plan, you understand that architecture creates itself. And this is so obvious, but as, a, as an architect, I cannot, I cannot uh, uh, make some sort of rule or, 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 or like, you know, I don't have any real fact saying why it is so, why this magic happens. So it is also about the book man to believe and saying that very like fluid you don't have a scientific facts this exists and this 
but it is very possible that really architecture is a very sort of realm of things that are never anything else. And therefore, That's feeling. This is what was of interest to me. So I found really close. And therefore, you are quite interested as well in feeling and personal experiences of spaces, and construction, too. Or is it more the materialization, the material, and the space itself, which is interesting for you? I think it's both. No, because when I when I see these 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 kind of 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 of, of rooms, they are always quite clear, organized, materialized, and 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 and, and, and constructed. What's interesting in your in your in your research or in your way of thinking is it's not just that you're interested in history. You have a, you have quite an op the opposite is interesting for you too. So your focus as well on you're very inspired on 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 spaceships on space on 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 this kind of thing. So it's somehow like an opposite construction or where is the connection is it is it the functional logic which needs to be there behind you know you have Corbusier who loves the ship because it's the engineer constructing something and in a spaceship you have probably the same you don't need an architect doing any formal any formal stuff because otherwise it just uh, it just drops or it explodes. It needs yeah. the, 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 the precise construction of a precise, the precise thinking of an engineer to make these things fly and function. Yes, uh, I think, as I said before, I think that connected it, at first, why I'm actually interested in engineering and to what I'm interested in contemporary culture. But I just made it as an example because I'm from a family line father was a space engineer, space designer, he was many, many times aircraft stuff. Of course, it's my like, environment, but on the other hand, um, I'm always curious about this connection of virtual and real, as I said many times. And what is the gap? What is between? It's sort of why actually the Renaissance in that sense where we uh, very good example because there are artists who are trying by the idea to connect this world in material formulation, connect virtual idea is virtual is the material here marble that yes or something, and they created that connector between like sky and earth, between virtual and real. This is the quest. This is. In the cornerstone of what I did for the last years, I'm trying to find this, you know, this edge, this connection, if it's possible, because uh, it is not about, you know, to make the box and fill it with some virtual process. It will be enough in this way. We, of course, have a lot of attempts, especially in Russia, especially in Moscow, to reason we thought of this. It doesn't work in reality. Whether when architects create few programs, they usually do not. The one was not not, not, not all this uh, plan will be in in, in means of planning programs. Um, and for me, it is interesting how to actually make the this box itself a process. So it's like becoming a very virtual reality, and uh, this is why uh, maybe uh, maybe this is why these rooms that we see some some sort of very direction and variation. So it is like uh, they also connect uh, with virtual technology. Uh, I just think that this is a big uh, challenge for contemporary architecture because 
not in every country practice that approach. We, we just make or we just make sort of a lot of bad system trying to call them and trying to give them it's not unique in the plan of equality not our I just asking myself how to do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Actually, Antarctica was interesting. There was a lot of scientists who worked with me because, you know, we understood that the continent itself is quite active, but it is really a virtual space. If you live there around five months, you will lose your health. And it's very dangerous. So it's the first question whether we really need to be there so active because it could, if you let's say, it could influence the health of the whole nature or the whole planet. And it's also sort of virtual continent. And I was trying to connect, you know, the uh, my experience, experience of our our Arctic and something virtual that also exists and not exists in our world. If it's understand something like that. And you worked as well in different places. You worked in Moscow, you at the moment in Ukraine, you have been in Paris, in Brussels. Do you see there any difference in thinking or is the system different or how was, was it different to work with architecture in these kind of different situations? Actually, I can say that not only in every, com every country is different, but also every office in country is different, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, but the most, of course, difference between Moscow, the Russian approach, Ukrainian approach, and the Swiss approach, absolutely are absolutely different. Uh, it is even uh, you know that uh, even in in Russia we have around two ways of thinking, um, contrast ways. First way is a rationalism, a continuation of and the second is the formal uh, formalism. I mean, we're thinking only about the shape in 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 very simple way. Uh, let's say in Ukraine, it's mostly about the function, sustainability. All this direction that and every country has its own its own uh, ideal, own understanding. It is historical of society. We have you know historically we have different different um, experiences in different architecture and of all of course it also their mental understanding. What what is the grass the concrete? The grass with concrete not always will be understood by Ukrainian not because it's not beautiful but because it just mentally not understanding. And it, it just so actually it's a big challenge to work with in concrete. And where do you feel the closest? Is it to Ukrainian culture? Probably not, or probably yes, or is it more? No, if I would have my own country, <laughs> I, would, I would be connected to it. Fortunately, I think I'm sort of a mix of all this, all this, all this idea and all this approach to architecture. I'm very much in love with uh, what actually Pavel tried to do with translated. I love it, not because I see it very extensive. This is what I love. Um, I think the the style of German architecture also very sweet. I, for me, it's important that I have to understand. But I and but I think it's interesting in your approach in architecture. Is on one hand, 
you don't have architecture as as I understand what you do is somehow is very risky always you try it's a kind of experiment yes it's, it's always of course not all projects are are accepted to be built, you know, and I understand it should be built and trying to find some very simple formula because it's not important to have because for now I let's say work for Germany and France and in both patients I'm trying to find the most rational real solution so it's you know all my some uh, speculative projects like the first house it's just like um are important for me as for architects. It's, it's, it's not a place for architecture or theoretical architecture, but it is something that I am not, uh, could be built, but not importantly to be built because of many reasons. But I think it's, anyways, it is sort of book. That you, you can write a book or you can make such a speculative thought. It's almost the same. See it out, suddenly. Mm -hmm. formal um, composition that you can use in other approach later on. Um, in reality, in practice, I'm not not going to have such a level of experimentation, but I always try to find the most experimental way. <laughs> and but still, you are quite in. You're always interested as well in in in, in teaching and 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 and. You teach at the moment as well, or you did, at least last uh, I year? I teach a lot, actually, uh, in Moscow and in I have course. And I teach theory and history of architecture, I write it by myself and always make a new uh, program for my students. Uh, it's all uh, published on my website. I also published uh, the, the the body of work there. Um, and, and what's and the what's the most important thing there? Why do you do this? Or what's the challenge out of this? Is it the experiment? Is it to, that you that you can go deeper into into the, see things, or is it that you like to work with people, or is it the thinking process you 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 enjoy to jump into the, these kind of things? I think everything that you just said is uh, true, but the most importantly, of course, for me, uh, uh, teaching is chance to go where I cannot go when I practice something. That's why we actually teach, that we can be more brave, that we have more tools, when we do a project with students and we have time to think, we can make like a collection of different ideas during the teaching that you use in the future because you are very brave when you work and research. But actually for me, the, the most important in teaching is communication with students, especially with younger students that I can can something share with them. Because when I was a student, I was I wanted to understand everything and I I just you know it I always needed more in teachers and travel a lot. And I think for me the most important is to find something around the contemporary architecture and to share it with sort of my biggest interest. Mm -hmm. If I can do that. What are the next projects you're working on? Uh, well, I hope it will be a of ships. Rain happen, but waiting more. Waiting on. I'm now uh, working on health and some in Germany. It's also experimental, but it's hard spaces. It's less in architecture, but more artistic. 
Mm-hmm. And but you were, were talking about this project in Germany, for example, you even loved to to involve people with 3D printing, with other uh, tools which are completely on the opposite of, uh, let's say, a daily architecture uh, work. What's the challenge about it? Why you love to 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 do this stuff, which is not really where, where a client they're always afraid of 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 of, of, of having any problems. And still you're challenging them or you love these experiments to do something in a, out of the out of completely out of the box. This is exactly because all clients are afraid of this. I want because I see a very big uh, big potential in this technology. And I just always think how it could be presented in architecture and popularized in architecture. When I see the chance to use it, I always try to use it in simple way. Um, uh, yes, and here I just see that it actually even this 3D printing technology, uh, we know a lot about it, but we don't see in architecture world how it actually works. So there are some projects, maybe small projects or um, projects of the, on the on the level of exhibition that could be actually a good platform for trying to start to make some technologies real or to understand whether it really will work for architecture or not. So I think just about actually using this potential in architecture. It yeah. is my interest. And, and I, I feel also responsibility that we have to engage artists and industrial designers to to try just and to see actually this potential that we say our architecture yeah if, if that's that's the great potential of faster things like uh, pavilions like um as you did a stage design and these kind of things which are which are even temporary so it doesn't need to last for the next 500 yeah. years and there is a chance on it to 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 try something out, and then probably to 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 go a step further into into the whole thing. Yeah. Is design or objects are these uh, furniture? Or is this a, is this a theme you are involved as well, or you're interested in? Uh, you know, I love as an architect. I'm trying to not be responsible for furniture or chairs or tables. I still think that it's not, not. I love to work with the organization of states in general uh, on making maybe a, a system of screening system, let's say, in architecture. So, like making an arrangement for all this uh, industrial design inside that I invite other people to really can do that really good. I mean that I do not let's say in, in some of my projects I just make the plan of how actually the, the event should be organized. And I make some sort of um temporary wall system, system of default. I think what material it could be when I make the wall. Um in this in in the space is in how the space is built and what material I use to make this organization is all, all, all under my But the content, elementary content, the elements, people that I would invite. Are you not afraid the user will destroy your room with all the things he brings in? Well, I think it could be the one person or maybe actually I, I could not, I can invite people or I, I cannot invite. Maybe in some projects, only like organization space and some system of partitions, it could be enough. And they can use the furniture they already have. Uh, but I'm still in my practice, I never did um, like set of uh, 
furniture, table, chairs, or any event, uh, but will see, maybe it will happen once. No, because, for example, this room you just show here at the moment is, is, is very, it's only architecture. There is no space for anything else. Uh, you know, here is a space, the architecture. What I, when I do, if we will talk about the buildings, it was the question that I asked really, it was about the temporary spaces, like exhibition of space. Mm -hmm. but if we talk about the architecture, for me, I, I see uh, real architecture, I see a sort of a case where you don't need the chairs. You create the chair by system of walls, sort of a case. Then the table, wall can be a chair, the wall can be a table at the same time, and even the placing of, let's say, sofa, it could be also part of the flooring system. So for me, it's just I make like a zoning in the room where everything could be. Uh, and make furniture out of architecture in, in, in a very, if it's possible. If it's possible uh, in this. It's the same it happens here where the table, the concrete platform really work. That's just interesting because it's somehow, it's very, it's somehow very old fashioned in a way, as you yeah. show this, and this, this. Because, like, you know that I showed you the pyramid, the entrance, mm -hmm. also, like connected by the bodies to the architecture. I just had experiments uh, of being in such spaces, and I found it magical. I mean, I felt it by my body, the wall, window or wall, door, everything was in the same room. I find it, find it very, very architectural. Because it is timeless, really. It is something that the power of architecture, because you can't move this chair. Architecture has died in the all the time. Yeah. No, because <laughs> it's a problem of our architecture today. Sometimes, even let's say in Germany, that the architect at the end just, or in Sweden, the architect just designs the. Um, the outside facade and all the rest is done by other people. Yeah. All your pro, all the projects you show are extremely spatial. It's, uh, you haven't shown very much. I haven't seen any facade or as a facade. It's always a space where you walk through. It's a, it's a question of place, of rooms, of light, of material. That's the thing you, you, are, you, you, you go very back to a very essential way of the architect constructing and 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 formulating and 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 and, and organizing something without without this this very simple few simplified few which is at the moment in all these medias where you lose a bit the, the idea of what architecture is it's not just a form it's not just a facade it's an it's an essence of of of, of life and interior and space Yes, because we also in Russian cities also have this problem. I cannot name the facet. Some people like me make facet for the building that already exists. For me, it is impossible. That way, that's why in this lecture I didn't show any like shell, shell for facet because the facet for me, in the very best scenario, is growing out of the inner, out of the core of the room, as we say. Unfortunately, yes, you're right. We have this practice in architecture, and I think uh, it's uh, it's a very, very, very problematic that we everywhere. On the other hand, you pointed out that uh, architecture is very much based on a specific site, on a place, and an area. All the floor plans you showed us were without the connection. Yeah. It was just the object itself. Yes. How do you connect these kind of things? So what's the object and what's the site and what's the relation between these two? Yes, I, it was, uh, I actually, I thought there was a paper in plan, but I showed only architecture because we're talking essential of architecture, non-problematic architecture. 
But for me, when I say about situation, it is very interesting. But when I understand situation, it's not about environment, but about the whole situation. In let's say the house for two, for me, the situation was the life of those two people. Uh, of course, there is a garden around, I mean, landscape around this house, uh, the parking and so on. But for me, as for architect, uh, what was so interesting first, the intimate or sense of life of those people. The same I showed when I showed the, the institute of uh, fashion, the term also. Uh, my uh, hierarchy, of my interest as architect is style of thinking or the situation inside of these people. Uh, here is the process of some scientific research, and there is relationship between two people, two different people, somehow have to live together. So this is when I'm talking about situation, what is interesting. The same was with this, uh, this research station, also look without environment, because uh, for me it was also about the Content of, of this uh, building station. Of course, uh, when in in reality, of course, when the naked for have to put on landscape and the soft essential. But here for this lecture, for this topic, I decided to show only essentiality of my work. I didn't create the landscape. I never changed the landscape. Have a garden, I kind of did not touch it because I was very nature. And yeah, I have been the lecture about it called uh, Reflective Ecology. But I, uh, in all this, I, I very much was inspired by the project of Antofas, the Tree City, where he was talking about uh, untouched nature that surrounds us and that we have to propagate that. Uh, addition to the natural resources, to the forest, to green. Uh, for me, it's also the risk. I'm a target. If I do my job, I do something else. And mm -hmm. nature, for me, is always enough. Try to make it possible. But you, you, the, the, your architecture seems to be very like a kind of total architecture. It's a very clear and 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 and, and organized thing. And you, as I know, you garden plants are very essential. Where is this? Uh, this very very is it separated from architecture? Is it? No, oh, it's not a separate, but it is something that me. Um, something like a temple, you know, that I'm afraid to touch. I would love that everyone should, you know, yes, that uh, I just, I could be very accurate with that. Every flower and tree, that is why I'm, I'm afraid to show. It's not because I do not respect it. On contrary, I over-respect nature. <laughs> no, I'm really, and I'm just, uh, and this is a problem. Even when I'm making a tree, the image of tree, I think many times, how would I represent it? me it's a self-problematic question it is funny but it is just i mean but it is about understanding of how nature is important especially in the course of how we show it how we, how we work with that that artificial or not artificial. Mm. i'm very much impressed by work of christophe Giraud. i told something that his book I think is something that mm -hmm. and um it is just a very inspiring also I think it's a very uh, I'm very close to him. Um is there still any question open from the students?
everybody is very silent. Um, yes, I enjoyed it very much to have you here. Um, and to, to, to be able to enter a bit, to, to, to present and to enter your thinking and to present what you do and, and, and how you try to deal with this situation in, in architecture where we are in. That even if we talk about non-referential architecture, references are still existing. You have you have a certain system you use, which is important for you, which goes very basic, which goes back very much to basic thinking on architecture, of architecture, and 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 connections with architecture, and this I enjoy very much. Just and, like we are, we want to be non-referential. It's just like perfect world that we are. Are dreaming about, but of course, just then. But we are not God. Then it's always the question how to bring these dreams or these possibilities into a specific site or to a client. That's always very difficult, especially in the situation of, of Ukraine, where the, where, where, where the economical situation is not so easy. Or you see less possibility, or is it is it there are there different possibilities if you build here, there, or in Moscow, because you have worked there all over these places. I didn't have yet the client, the Russian client, or the Ukrainian client yet. My personal client. But in the offices you worked, you had these connections. Yes, but in the office where I worked, of course. We had the client's Russian Ukrainian client, and it was impossible to make such a design. Why? Again, because uh, people had a very, I think, um, fixed uh, set of values the building should be, look like. I think it's very connected. To the Western world uh, values, like you know, star uh, architects like Big Dakar, and what I experienced, unfortunately, is that we have only one way. You could make like a Big or like Dakar, or you shouldn't do anything at all. I mean, it's very about you know something. A desire to be a part of fashion that exists. That's what I see everywhere in, in, in Ukraine and, and not importantly, not important what level, who is the client, what the building is, but they want something like of that popularized uh, big architecture that we have today, like posters or something. And everything you can do actually is open uh, their project and copy and make a copy. This is why actually I I do not work now for a big zero. Nevertheless, it's it's a super interesting. Yeah, a client and something is, is always about the state of the art of today especially in schools, especially in universities, where you teach, where you think about the future. You always as well prepare for the future. So it's just, and that's an easy, that's an interesting thing that you need to give something to, to nourish the students for, which is, which is, which will be there later on so it's trading to special clients because they, they are the business and they're not architects i will send the book to my clients you know architect and say i have to prepare you I said okay i think it's <laughs> practice we will see what will be from this experimentation mm -hmm. <laughs> no but this, uh, these experiments are important for the profession and we will we will 
still con we need to continue to do to to design and to 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 work and to think where and how we continue and uh, i think that's an important task especially for schools but as well in practice and at the end practice shows um if we succeed or if we, we, we are able to 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 think and I think we need a flexibility to 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 continue with architecture and that's as well the reason why I invited you because you don't have really a position which is let's say normal you try to bring together a lot of things into projects which are extremely poetic which are extremely physical and, and spatial and that's uh, that's a chance um there's a chance to think about these kind of, 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 of positions and that's why i enjoy talking to you and, and and enjoy talking to you about architecture concepts and and and, and thinking about architecture and um i think architecture is so large and it's so poetic that it has really a power and it has a power to move something or make possibilities for people in their lives. And that's why that was a fantastic one. Okay. Thank you, Volvo. Thank you for the invitation. It was it's always a pleasure to talk to you about architecture, especially today. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, everyone, you, everyone, for attention. I don't know whether people heard me or not. Yes, I can talk. They do probably, but that's as usual, they are off, they're all switched off. Um, uh, thank you so much. I think um, and see you in the nearest future. We hope so. Yes, and uh, this is a series uh, of, of 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 lectures. Um, on twenty third of November, we'll have a we will have a talk with Frederick Benesch and Katrina Lundberg. It's an architecture office from Stockholm. Uh, about their approach on architecture and the 14th of December we will talk of Anta with Antonio De Rossi he's a professor in Turin at the Politecnico and he's an important figure in the reactivation of architecture and projects and spaces in the Alps and especially in the Italian context a really important figure and um, which I admire very much in his work and his, his approach um, but and I think what's really it's interesting with your work, with um, the, 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 the Frederick and, and Katerina in Stockholm and Antonio, is the belief in architecture that it's architecture itself can can do something good and, and create something which is more than, than, than just a project and its function. It's, um, it's a place for life and, 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 and for us to live. Thank you much. Thank you. See you Have soon. Good Have a good evening. Bye. Thank you much, everybody. Thanks to the students. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.